Hey guys, Crypto Mike here with the mic check. One, two, one, two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and read the introduction for the laws of human nature by Robert Greene. If you come across any special trait of meanness or stupidity, you must be careful not to let it annoy or distress you but to look upon it merely as an addition to your knowledge, a new fact to be considered in studying the character of humanity. Your attitude towards it will be that of the mineralogist who stumbles upon a very characteristic specimen of a mineral. And that's a quote by Arthur Schopenhauer. Throughout the course of our lives, we inevitably have to deal with a variety of individuals who stir up trouble and make our lives difficult and unpleasant. Some of these individuals are leaders or bosses, some are colleagues and some are friends. They can be aggressive or passive aggressive, but they are generally masters at playing on our emotions. They often appear charming and refreshingly confident brimming with ideas and enthusiasm, and we fall under their spell. Only when it is too late do we discover that their confidence is irrational and their ideas ill-conceived. Among colleagues, they can be those who sabotage our work or careers out of secret envy, excited to bring us down. Or they could be colleagues or hires who reveal or to our dismay that they are completely out for themselves, using us as stepping stones. What inevitably happens in these situations is that we are caught off guard, not expecting such behavior. Often these types will hit us with elaborate cover stories to justify their actions or blame handy scapegoats. They know how to confuse us and draw us into drama that they control. We might protest or become angry, but in the end we feel rather helpless. The damage is done. Then another such type enters our life and the same story repeats itself. We often notice a similar sensation of confusion and helplessness when it comes to ourselves and our own behavior. For instance, we suddenly say something that offends our boss or colleague or friend. We are not quite sure where it came from, but we are frustrated to find that some anger and tension from within us has leaked out in a way that we regret. Or perhaps enthusiastically, we throw our weight into some project or scheme, only to realize it was quite foolish and a terrible waste of time. Or perhaps we fall in love with a person who is precisely the wrong type for us, and we know it, but we cannot help ourselves. What has come over us, we wonder. In these situations, we catch ourselves falling into self-destructive patterns of behavior that we cannot seem to control. It is as if we harbor a stranger within us, a little demon who operates independently of our willpower and pushes us into doing the wrong things. And the stranger within us is rather weird, or at least weirder than how we imagine ourselves. What we can say about these two things, people's ugly actions and our own occasionally surprising behavior, is that we usually have no clue as to what causes them. We might latch onto some simple explanations, like... That person is evil, a sociopath, or something came over me. I wasn't myself. But such pat descriptions do not lead to any understanding or prevent the same patterns from recurring. The truth is that we humans live on the surface, reacting emotionally to what people say and do. We form opinions of others and ourselves that are rather simplified. We settle for the easiest and most convenient story to tell ourselves. What if, however, we could dive below the surface and see deep within, getting closer to the actual roots of what causes human behavior? What if we could understand why some people turn envious and try to sabotage our work, or why their misplaced confidence causes them to imagine themselves as godlike and infallible? 
What if we could truly fathom why people suddenly behave irrationally and reveal a much darker side to their character, or why they are always ready to provide a rationalization for their behavior, or why we continually turn to leaders who appeal to the worst in us? What if we could look deep inside and judge people's character, avoiding the bad hires in personal relationships that cause us so much emotional damage? If we really understood the roots of human behavior, it would be much harder for the more destructive types to continually get away with their actions. We would not be so easily charmed and misled. We would not be able to anticipate their nasty and manipulative maneuvers and see through their cover stories. We would not allow ourselves to get dragged into their dramas, knowing in advance that our interest is what they depend on for their control. We would finally rob them of their power through their ability to look into the depths of their character. Similarly, with ourselves, what if we could look within and see the source of our more troubling emotions and why they drive our behavior, often against our own wishes? What if we could understand why we are so compelled to desire what other people have or to identify so strongly with a group that we feel contempt for those who are on the outside? What if we could find out what causes us to lie about who we are or to inadvertently push people away? Being able to understand more clearly that stranger within us would help us to realize that it is not a stranger at all, but very much a part of ourselves, and that we are far more mysterious, complex, and interesting than we had imagined. And with that awareness, we would be able to break the negative patterns in our lives, stop making excuses for ourselves, and gain better control of what we do and what happens to us. Having such clarity about ourselves and others could change the course of our lives in so many ways. But first, we must clear up a common misconception. We tend to think of our behavior as largely conscious and willed. To imagine that we are not always in control of what we do is frightening, but in fact it is the reality. We are subject to forces from deep within us that drive our behavior and that operate below the level of our awareness. We see the results, our thoughts, moods, and actions, but we have little conscious access to what actually moves our emotions and compels us to behave in certain ways. Look at our anger, for instance. We usually identify an individual or a group as the cause of this emotion. But if we were honest and dug down deeper, we would see that what often triggers our anger or frustration, frustration has deeper roots. It could could be something in our childhood or some particular set of circumstances that triggers the emotion. We can discern distinct patterns if we look. When this or that happens, we get angry. But in the moment that we feel anger, we are not reflective or rational. We merely ride the emotion and point fingers. We could say something similar about a whole slew of emotions that we feel. Specific types of events trigger sudden confidence or insecurity or anxiety or attraction to a particular person or hunger for attention. Let us call the collection of these forces that push and pull us from deep within human nature. Human nature stems from the particular writing wiring of our brains, the configuration of our nervous system, and the way we humans process emotions, all of which developed and emerged over the course of five million years or so of our evolution as a species. We can ascribe many of the details to our nature, to the distinct way we evolved as a social animal to ensure our survival. Learning to cooperate with others, co coordinating our actions with the group on a high level, creating novel forms of communication, and ways of maintaining group discipline. This early development lives on within us and continues to determine our behavior, even in the modern, sophisticated world that we live in. To take one example, look at the evolution of human emotion. The survival of our earliest ancestors depended on their ability to communicate with one another well before the invention of language. They evolved new and complex emotions, joy, shame, gratitude, jealousy, resentment, etc. The signs of these emotions could be read immediately on their faces, communicating their moods quickly and effectively. 
they become they became extremely permeable to the emotions of others as a way to bind the group more tightly together to feel joy or grief as one or to remain united in the face of danger to this day we humans remain highly susceptible to the moods and emotions of those around us compelling all kinds of behavior on our part unconsciously imitating others wanting what they have getting swept up in viral feelings of anger or outrage we imagine we're acting out of our own free will unaware of how deeply our susceptibility to the emotions of others in the group is affecting what we do and how we respond we can point to other such forces that emerge from this deep past and that similarly mold our everyday behavior for instance, we, our need to continually rank ourselves and measure our self-worth through our status is a trait that is noticeable among all hunter-gatherer cultures and even among chimpanzees, as are our tribal instincts, which cause us to divide people into insiders or outsiders. We can add to these primitive qualities our need to wear masks to disguise any, disguise any behavior that is frowned upon by the tribe leading to the formation of a shadow personality from all the dark desires we have repressed. Our ancestors understood the shadow and its dangerousness, imagining it originated from spirits and demons that needed to be exercised. We rely on a different myth, quote, something came over me. Once this primal current or force within us reaches the level of consciousness, we have to react to it, and we do so depending on our individual spirit and circumstances, usually explaining it away superficially without really understanding it. Because of the precise way in which we are we evolved, there are a limited number of these forces of human nature, and they lead to the behavior mentioned above. Envy, grandiosity, irrationality, short-sightedness, conformity, aggression and passive aggression, to name a few. They also lead to empathy and other positive forms of human behavior. For thousands of years, it has been our fate to largely grope in the shadows when it comes to understanding ourselves and our own human nature. We have labored under so many illusions about the human animal, imagining we descended magically from a divine source from angels instead of primates. We have found any signs of our primitive nature and our animal roots deeply distressing something to deny and repress. We have covered up our darker impulses with all kinds of excuses and rationalizations, making it easier for some people to get away with the most unpleasant behavior. But finally, we're at a point where we can overcome our resistance to the truth about who we are through the sheer weight of knowledge we have now accumulated about human nature. We can exploit the vast literature and psychology amassed over the last 100 years, including detailed studies of childhood and the impact of our early development. He mentions Melanie Klein, John Balby, Donald Winnicott, I guess these are authors here, as well as the works on the roots of narcissism. And he quotes Heinz Kohut, the shadow sides of our personality, Carl, Carl Jung, the roots of our empathy, Simon Baron Cohen and the configuration of our emotions, Paul Ekman. We can now call the many advances in the sciences that can aid us into our self-understanding, studies of the brain, Antonio Damasio, Joseph Delu, of our unique biological makeup, Edward O. Wilson, of the relationship between the body and the mind, V.S. Ramachandran, of primates, primates, Franz de Waal, and hunter-gatherers Jared Diamond, of our new, of our economic behavior Daniel Kahneman, and of course how we operate in groups Wilfred Bayan Elliot Aronson. We can also include in this the works of certain philosophers Arthur Schopenhauer, Friedrich Nietzsche, Jose Ortega y Gasset who have illuminated so many aspects of our human nature, as well as the insights of many novelists, George Eliot, Henry James, and Ralph Ellison, were often the most sensitive to the unseen, unseen parts of our behavior. And finally, we can include the rapidly expanding library of biographies now available, revealing human nature in depth and in action. This book is an attempt to gather together this immense storehouse of knowledge and ideas from different branches. See 
the bibliography for the key sources. To piece together an accurate and instructive guide to human nature, basing itself on the evidence, not on particular viewpoints or moral judgments. It is brutally realistic. It is a brutally realistic appraisal of our species, dissecting who we are so we can operate with more awareness. Consider the laws of human nature a kind of codebook for deciphering people's behavior. Ordinary, strange, destructive, the full gamut. Each chapter deals with a particular aspect of law of human nature. We can call them laws in that under the influence of the elemental these elemental forces, we humans tend to react in relatively predictable ways. Each chapter has a story of some iconic individual or individuals who illustrate the law negatively or positively, along with ideas and strategies on how to deal with yourself and others under the influence of this law. Each chapter ends with a section on how to transform this basic human force into something more positive and productive, so that we are no longer passive slaves to human nature, but actively transforming it. You might be tempted to imagine that this knowledge is a bit old-fashioned. Uh, after all, you might argue, we are now so sophisticated and technologically advanced, so progressive and, and enlightened, we have moved well beyond our primitive roots. We are in the process of rewriting our nature. But the truth is, in fact, the opposite. We have never been more in the thrall of human nature and its destructive potential than now. And by ignoring this fact, we are playing with fire. Look at how the permeability of our emotions has only been heightened through social media, where viral effects are continually sweeping through us and where the most manipulative leaders are able to exploit and control us. Look at the aggression that is now openly displayed in the virtual world, where it is so much easier to play out our shadow sides without repercussions. Notice how our propensities to compare ourselves with others, to feel envy, and to seek status through attention have only become intensified with our ability to communicate so quickly with so many people. Finally, look at our tribal tendencies and how they have found the perfect medium to operate in. We can find a group to identify with, reinforce our tribal opinions in a virtual echo chamber, and demonize any outsiders, leading to mob intimidation. The potential for mayhem stemming from the primitive side of our nature has only increased. It is simple. Human nature is strong, stronger than any individual. Human nature is stronger than any individual, than any institution or technological invention. It ends up shaping what we create to reflect itself and its primitive roots. It moves us around like pawns. Ignore the laws at your own peril. Refusing to come to terms with human nature simply means that you are dooming yourself to patterns beyond your control and to feelings of confusion and helplessness. Okay, I think that's it for this video. That was the introduction of this book. I will do more in the series. This is The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene, 48 Laws. There are 40, 48, I don't know if you could see that, 48, 48 Laws. That means I'm gonna do 48 videos on this. All right guys, I love you guys. Pay attention to this book. Be strong. Be good people. Crypto Mike out. Peace.